Jewish and Freda not, she wouldn't be considered Jewish. But my daughter has the right of return. She can return to Israel. They'll give her an apartment. They'll set her up. She has the right of Jewish citizenship because of their ancestry. These people went through most struggles. They were told to go to the promised land. They were some of the fiercest uh, warriors. And God told them, now, it, I, you know, sometimes I think, uh, you know, people accuse Christianity of being a bloody religion because the children of Israel went and fought and pushed out all these tribes and God told them to eradicate these tribes. But I begin to read a little closer and he explained why. Those people had gone so far away and drifted, it was God's judgment and His punishment on those people for their idolatry. They would even offer their baby children up to false goddesses and put them in fires alive as sacrifices to, uh, to their false gods. And it was a stench in the nostril of God. And you know, one day God is coming back and there's going to be the battle of Armageddon. And so it's a similar uh, narrative. And he told them to push those tribes out and then he gave them the land and there was difficulty and there was fighting uh, and there was such major struggle. But then when they finally took the land and they built a temple and Solomon went to that temple to uh, dedicate it to the Lord in 1 Kings 8.56, he says, Praise to the Lord who's given rest to his people as a rest after all these wars and there were still people trying to destroy Israel and they're still trying to destroy them today. Even this week some Israelis have been killed because of people that similar uh, in ancestry to these very people that this one God said get rid of all of them because they're going to keep continually trying to destroy you. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they went through everything that you could ever imagine. If you think America's struggling because of the things they're going through, well, they went through, I don't know how much more struggle than we ever thought about. And look what he says. The King Solomon, was the, he was the wisest man in all of the world. He said, not one word has failed. Not one world, word has failed of all the good promises that he gave through his servant, Moses. You know, there's over a thousand promises that God has given us. Some of them he's going to write on our heart. And we have it written. We have a tattoo on our heart of the promises of God that will never fail. We have an eternity on our heart. And we can live our life with that, knowing that. So there's a sure promise of God. Let's go to the next slide. We'll pass the illustration. Let's pass that illustration. That was a Crowfoot, the Indian, who was given, uh, they let the railroad build on his land, so they gave him a free uh, pass to ride the train anytime he wanted to for all of his life. He never rode the train, but he kept the pass around his neck. He was so proud of that. And, and that's sort of, sort of like what we have. We have something in our heart that eternity, and uh, we will have it uh, on our you know, in our mind for the rest of our lives yes. until we're in heaven with the Lord. Amen. But there's a sure reward. Or we, uh, did we skip one? Sure reward. Let's go back. A sure reward. We can be certain that God will reward His people. If God never fails, He will never fail to reward and honor his word in Matthew 10 42 he says if anyone gives even a cup of water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple I tell you the truth he will certainly not lose his reward and it was proven true when the disciples were sent out God provided for them and uh, and the people that provided helped with that the, them when they were out doing their ministry God blessed them back and uh, so will it be with us as we help in ministry and help uh, in any way we can, even to the smallest thing of giving a cup of water in the name of the Lord. There's this, let's go to this, this illustration, Jack, who
Who is Jack? Jack uh, is a stray dog. He's a little mutt. And the the guard for the uh, the what's the name of the palace in uh, London? Buckingham. Buckingham Palace. You know the the guards that they have the change in the guards. It's a famous thing to go see the guards change. And some of those uh, military people there are some of the most well-trained military in the world. This little dog, he was a stray dog in London. He goes up and he starts making friends with this guard at Buckingham Palace. And he wouldn't go away and, and it somehow he just wove his way into the heart of this military man. And the military man adopted this dog and named him Jack. And so the, man, the military uh, soldier was uh, told to go to fight in the Crimean War in Crimea and it was a major battle in the British history and it was a hard fought battle and many people died there was a lot of blood shed there was a lot of violence there was a lot of things happening and the little dog stayed with his military partner uh, without ever leaving and the soldier died in the conflict he was mortally wounded he was laid on the battlefield dead and there was explosions and bombs going off and bullets being shot. And there was Jack right there beside the fallen soldier when they came to retrieve his body. Jack never left his side. He was faithful to the very end. And he was so well known at that time that Queen Victoria had a small Victoria cross made and honored rewarded Jack, the stray dog, uh, a medal of honor, the highest medal of honor at that time in the world, wow. the Victorian cross. And so he got this Victorian cross to wear around his, his neck for his obedience uh, to his master. And that's what I want. I want to be obedient to my master. Yes. And, I want to, and, and I know that God will never fail to reward obedience if he's going to reward a dog, well, maybe he'll even reward me if I'm obedient to the Lord, you know? Even to the point of, even if you give a cup of cold water in the name of the Lord, he'll, he knows, he sees the omnipotent God, the omniscient God sees, and the omnipresent God, he's there to reward us for our obedience to the Lord. And then the next is an assured acceptance. Acceptance is a powerful thing. They, they did studies of babies that had never been touched or kissed or hugged or touched by humans. And uh, they, they did this uh, scientific study, in, of, I think it was around 10 infants. And s several of them died because they'd never had any interaction or inter acceptance by other others acceptance is a very powerful thing and so because god never fails we can be assured of a certainty uh, of his acceptance in fact when we're told to enter into his kingdom he says enter in uh to to the joys of the lord and so we're we're accepted in the beloved because of what Christ did. All that the Father, John 6, 37, all the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. So the Lord allows us to be accepted. And you know, one of the growths of things that causes the church to grow is uh, in one of the things that young people are looking for in America, Barnard, this guy who does research on how churches grow and move forward and expand the kingdom, they're looking for a, a, a group of believers that are accepting and that are authentic. And I pray that that's what we're going to be, is accepting and authentic believers. They're looking for authenticity and they're looking for an acceptance. And if you can offer that, your church has a potential uh, of moving forward. And I want to go to the next slide, and we'll skip this, skip that. The next one is sure divine love. 
in Romans 8.38, I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Even that big black hole they just found with the latest telescope, it's not even going to draw us in, in a way, you know. In fact, they say the universe is just keeping expanding and expanding forever, for eternity. But we can be assured of God's love, divine love, because God never fails. We can be certain of the divine love of God. And so I want to share a story that's a, a true story about the American Revolution when we were fighting uh, for our independence. There was a writer for the American Revolution, and he, he was a brilliant, gifted writer, and he, could, he, he was really making a huge difference uh, to, uh, for the American Revolution to get people recruited, and, uh, but he had a problem. The problem was drinking. He was a good writer, but he was a drunk. Let's face it. He just drank too much. And he was engaged to this debutante, which was the top lady in uh, Boston area at that time. And the lady realized that it wasn't going to work out. She loved him, but because of his drinking problem, it would be disastrous to go ahead and fulfill uh, the commitment to be married. So she broke off the engagement. And you know what happened when she broke off the engagement with him? What did he do? What do you think? He went out and started drinking more. Yeah. And so he got so drunk, he fell into the street in the noonday sun. The sun was beating down and he was uncovered. His face was uncovered. And the lady was in her car carriage and she was riding by and she saw her ex laying on the street, passed out, and she had such move, her heart was moved, she was worried he was, the sun was going to burn him. So she got out of the uh, carriage and she went and she put her handkerchief over his face so he wouldn't get burned. And when he woke up uh, from his drunkenness, he, got the handkerchief and she saw, he saw that it was her initials on the handkerchief and he realized, oh, she still loves me. And he was so motivated because of that that he stopped drinking and drinking, and he never had another drink the rest of his life. That was a powerful motivator. Think about that. If a woman's love, that's just human natural love, can motivate someone like that, what about divine love? God's divine love that He has burned into our heart. We have a divine love that will never fail, and we can be confident uh, in that there's a certainty of God's divine love. And then there's an assured immortality. We can be certain that uh, of this assured immortality because God never fails. Let's read the scripture in 2 Corinthians 5.1. Now we know that if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. And I remember, you know, these fires that have taken place in this exclusive coastal community. I don't even know how to pronounce the name of it. Uh, maybe you do. Uh, what, is the, what is the name of that area? What is it? Aliso Viejo? Yes. Is that where it is? In that area? And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, these homes are worth millions and millions of dollars. In fact, I was reading where one, they, were, they needed the last signature. They were about to sell it. And it had gone up in value. And they were going to walk away from, with millions of dollars in, in equity. And the, right before they signed the last signature, the fire came and burned the place down. And, and then I was listening on the news. I have an antenna. I have an old style television pulled out of the air, you know. Uh, and uh, 
bypasses the cable. And uh, they, they were giving the news, the, the five o'clock news. And this one lady whose house was just completely burned, a million dollar home. And they asked her, well, what do you, what do you, they asked her her opinion of feelings about it. She says, well, you know, that I just thank God that I'm still alive. I know our house uh, was taken, but we have an eternal house in heaven. And says that this is not our this is not our home. Our home is in heaven and in this eternal place. We have a place of eternal, of assured immortality because of what Christ has done for us and because God never fails. She had that she was standing, there were burning embers behind her, and that was her house. And uh, this was her attitude. She was smiling. Can you imagine? Smiling. We had a friend who's an uh, audiologist, the doctor, Mary Kay Ukmanowicz. I had to practice pronouncing her last name, Ukmanowicz. And she, somehow she, I don't know why, but she likes us, Fred and I. And so she always comes to the Philippines and brings thousands of dollars worth